And then, as you said, people begin to use that power across many different industries. Mm -hmm. The case of the of the quantum chemistry researcher. Mm -hmm. When I've heard you tell that story, it's that he was running molecular simulations mm -hmm. in a way where it was much faster to run in parallel on mm -hmm. NVIDIA GPUs mm -hmm. even then than it was to run them on the supercomputer with the CPU that he had been using before. Yeah, that's true. So, oh my God, it's revolutionizing all of these other industries as well. Mm -hmm. It's beginning to change how we see what's possible with computers. And my understanding is that in the early 2000s, you see this and you realize that actually doing that is a little bit difficult because what that researcher had to do is he had to sort of trick the GPUs into thinking that his problem was a graphics problem. That's exactly right. No, that's very good. Well, so you, you create- You did some research. So you create a way to make that a lot easier. That's right. Specifically, it's a platform called CUDA, which lets programmers tell the GPU what to do using programming languages that they already know, like C. And that's a big deal because it gives way more people easier access to all of this computing power. 